Welcome to the Save Par Golf Podcast, where two average golfers talk about golf and things. I'm your host, Derek. My favorite thing is you throw your arm out like you're going to clap, and then you never do. And I always hate it. <laughs> Get, yeah, you fall for it. Uh, every time. I'm Dominic. This is Dom Dom. Uh, we are currently on episode 108, and we have a very special guest today. We have Raymond with Golf Projects, a place to talk about golf. If you're not following them on uh, Instagram, make sure to hit that follow button. Their handle is at Golf Projects. Raymond, thank you so much for hopping on the podcast, man. Appreciate it, fellas. Nailed the intro. Jump right into it, huh? I appreciate it. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I typically, I've been pretty good, but I have I have messed up here and there, so it, it does happen. But, yeah. <laughs> Glad we knocked that one out. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we obviously want to talk about what you're doing right now for the game of golf. You've been covering a lot of cool brands, so we'll definitely dive into that. But can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of how you got introduced to the game of golf? Yeah. So I, I currently live in Oregon. Um, I grew up in the state I've been in and around sports literally my entire life. So I grew up hooping, running track and then playing football. And so that was like the three main categories for me. And then that transpired to me actually playing college football at a D2 school up in Western Oregon, which is like 45 minutes, an hour outside of Portland, a couple 30 minutes outside of Salem, maybe. Um, and then, yeah, like in the off season when we weren't doing spring ball and winter conditioning and stuff, just wrecking our bodies, like, Golf was always something that was really interesting. We were super broke back in the day. This is well before NIL and like athletes actually being able to make money for themselves. So the driving range was something that we like to do. So we literally would go to Goodwill. We would try and pick up a club at a time and then just sit on the driving range in the summer and just hit balls. So that was like my first real introduction to the sport. And then after I had graduated, I had worked for a few years up at Nike. Uh, And then my wife actually got into nursing school down in Orange County. And I think when we moved down there, that's when things like really started to ramp up. Obviously, like it feels like the hub from a state standpoint where golf is at. So there's no shortage of participating in the sport. And then just naturally, like everybody out there is talking about it. If they're not talking about surfing or skating, like more so the conversation is going to be centered around golf. Um, So, yeah, that's I mean, that's really been the cusp of I moved back up to Oregon two or three years ago. Um, Super underrated state. For, for golf, I think. Um, a lot of people talk about Bandon, but there are some gems out here in the Portland, up where I'm at in the desert area. So there's a lot of places you can get a lot of action out here, which is cool. That's good because you might have to help us. Uh, I think we're planning on doing the next shindig that we do. It's like our little tournament that we throw every year mm-hmm. in Portland. Um, mm-hmm. And we don't know anything about Portland. I've never been to Oregon. Yeah, we have a... Uh, I don't know if you know Jeff from Chasing Aces. Yeah, I haven't met him, but follow yeah. him for sure yeah he's an awesome dude so he's also out there as well and so we were gonna try to definitely help uh rely on him for for some 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 points we've kind of teamed up with odin golf and that's kind of we've hosted a couple of events so that might be our next uh location i think that is going to be our next location so at this point somewhere yeah in oregon but i've heard it's it is very underrated i mean bandon is obviously the place that people think of or come it comes to mind but i've heard that there's so many other places and, and affordable for the most part as well yeah, that's, I mean, um, that's like the major hook. I think obviously like a lot of the 99% of the conversation is centered around Bandon, which I mean, deserves a respect, honestly, but a lot of, like I said, a lot of gems. I kind of like that too, just because it is a bit of like a, a shock and awe moment when people get out here and they can actually play. Um, so yeah, there's there's definitely no shortage of golf. It's just you, you got to battle the seasons. You got to get out here yeah. at the right right points during the year to make it fun. So before we dive into, you know, talking about the brand itself and, and, and what you're doing when you were in college playing football, going to the driving range, did you have like, I mean, golf in general, did you have like this idea of like, dude, it's just a little white golf ball. This is going to be like the easiest did thing you ever. think it was going to be just like, watch me do it. Yeah. And then, and then, and, and, and second qu- uh, answer or second question to that is, how did you actually play when you were hitting balls in the drive range or was it just something to like said, just trying to like, no, it's a good time and do something different. It's a good question. I think for me, because I had grew up in sport, I had watched like hours and hours and hours of film. So naturally like seeing action in motion, like having an understanding uh, to like, emulate that was something that I think I'm, I can do really well. Um, I played cornerback. So like a lot of my position is very reactive. So being able to like break down film, understand mechanically how my body can move 
I translated that fairly well to golf. Um, I never played baseball. I think I played like t-ball in second or third grade and that was a wrap like never been interested in the sport but for me like naturally just swinging throwing catching running was always something that came organic so the transition wasn't very hard um and what's crazy is uh we used to like obviously try and emulate tiger woods that was back when like lance armstrong was a big guy on the bike toe so anytime we were doing an activity that was outside of our like football ecosystem we were always emulating like the athletes that were at the highest standard which was fun so i have like just tons of videos where every swing someone's yelling out tiger woods in the background <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool that's actually a really interesting take because i said most people pick it up and play i never thought of it yeah. like that yeah the whole film thing but it makes sense i think that's why like a curry or a patrick mahomes or like you see a lot of i mean those are elite athletes sure. getting behind a stick but like from an athlete perspective, like you understand mechanically how to move your body in space. And so there is like somewhat of a natural transition, obviously like baseball players will dominate the swing. Um, but I think it, it's a lot easier. You've seen just like a trotty as an example, we'll talk about him working with specific athletes that aren't connected to golf specifically that translate like coaching really well, really quickly too. So um, yeah, I think it's just like an athlete thing. I like that. That's a great answer. Um, so that reminds me, uh, we had, we did a live episode of vibes at the, um, 3M open. Yep. There's a picture of me between a former NFL tight end and then a former NFL cornerback. I have never felt so small and unathletic in my <laughs> life. Cause I remember I'm standing next to ET and then Darius Hillary. It was the corner. And I'm just like, oh my god! <laughs> Super humble dude, we had a blast. Made a blast. It was yeah. like our first live. Podcast. Oh, and you stood yeah. next to like the shorter guys. Yeah, well, and I'm, I'm like I'm also shorter, so man, I'm gonna stick over. Here. <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not exactly not... tall. No, no, no. So I was like, wow, I'm so unathletic here. <laughs> well, you're short and athletic, but I get what you're saying though. Yeah, it was. Are you short and athletic? I would say. I mean, I played high school basketball. You blew out your knee. Football. I and pickleball. I did do that. I'm 34, <laughs> so that does happen. Actually, hey, that's though, why we're all golfing now. That's right. It's a little exactly. less stress. It's a little yes. less stress. Exactly. I played baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Loved it. Um, so yeah, let's let's talk about golf projects. What uh what where'd you get the idea to create this? And and for those who don't know, do you want to kind of explain what it is, yeah, kind of break it down for us? It for us. Because I mean, I've told you a handful of times now, I love what you're doing. I'm a big fan of it. I find myself just watching it not even realizing that I'm watching it because it's so easy. It's effortless. <laughs> it's very like informational and quick to the point, Yeah, but it's also really well put together, made and put together. Yeah. Awesome. No, I really appreciate it. I think there's a lot of like necessary intentionality that goes into it of just like even framing sound, like all those little things just to make exactly what you're calling out super digestible. Um, so with the, the project is essentially like, when I moved back to Oregon, the handle actually used to be called Oregon Golf Project, funny enough. And the whole uh, like tone of the page was just going to be me reposting images from all of the all Oregon golf courses and then the brands that were actually represented out here too. That's something that I don't think a lot of people understand. Like there's some really great heritage brands that have been in the space for a really long time that are in the state of Oregon. So just bringing to life some of those brands and then all of the the courses that the the state had to offer that lasted i don't know like six or seven months and it was just like reposting it was kind of like it just got boring i stopped like completely using the page altogether. and then just this last summer i have been i'm in brand and marketing been in brand and marketing for 10 years so i've always had an itch for creative endeavors and then like really putting a lot of time on the golf golf course, like a lot of the homies, a lot of friends and stuff would be texting me, talking to me on the course about footwear and apparel and stuff. And like, we talked about being sneaker heads before we started the pod, but like I decided I was just going to take all that energy that we were in all those conversations that we were having. And then just VO a lot of those conversations on an IG page and just see what happens. Cause I think secondarily to that, I couldn't find a lot of what I was looking for. And so I was just like, what if I aggregate all these things that I like, and then, like I said, just VO that on a page and just see what happens. So there's some franchise pieces that have popped up that I think people really attach to, like the golf drops is something that was really interesting. Yep. Um, the fact that like there's stuff happening every week for 
30, 40, 50 weeks throughout the calendar year is wild. Um, I never would have thought that that would have taken off the way that it has. But yeah, I mean, I think just what you guys are doing, just trying to find gems and then speaking to why we like it, why we see it um, and like the vibes around it has been a lot of fun. Yeah, I feel like we get so wrapped up around you know, the golf season, quote unquote. Obviously, here in Minnesota, we do have a golf season. I said that very Minnesotan. Um, <laughs> Small window, but yes. Like, like it's December, and this is like the weirdest December I think I've ever had in my 26 years of life, where it's today is what, December 19th, and there's no snow on the ground. Yeah, and it was relatively hmm. warm. So Which is happened, bizarre. So, yeah. But I feel like we still get, we all get so wrapped up around, you know, the golf season, the, you know, the majors throughout the year, the tournaments, that we kind of forget that. There's always something new every week in golf, whether it's, you know, a new shirt, a new hat, you know, a new company came out. I think that's what makes the golf space super fun and, you know, always evolving and really cool. A hundred percent. And there's a lot of narratives that are going on. Like Top Golf is really interesting. There's a bunch of indoor facilities that are doing really interesting things. The TGL pops up and it's gone. We have Live, we have PGA Tour. Like it's a never ending news cycle. Like I posted a day like the the nine or 10 of my favorite brands that I've been on like my radar this year, but in the subject or the body copy, it was like 2023 might be the year that we look back on when things like changed in a dramatic way. Um, so 24 is going to be really interesting, but I think 23 might be that year where we're like, I think that's when everything like really started to evolve in a rapid way. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. This has kind of been the year where we've seen like streetwear, skateboarding kind of stuff like that start to really mingle in golf you know like you're talking about you know Mahomes and Curry and you know we're starting to see all these big athletes take the course by storm and be you know really good like you know I feel like we're gonna talk about athletes we have to throw Tony Romo in there like, Romo's a stick yeah mm -hmm. like he could make mm -hmm. the tour I think he almost did I mean he played on a lot of uh he played on he plans my events the corn for a tour I think yeah. he played some events out there I mean yeah, yeah. but we're starting to athlete. we're starting to see everything kind of you know, start to mingle into golf, which I don't think I've ever seen, especially in the last few years. Um, I mean, because golf really exploded in 20. Yeah. You know, for a lot for of like, people. Yeah, for like non-competitive golfers, just in general, the growing, it, it grew quite a bit. Well, and then like to cover like the actual brands, I mean, you have like Travis Scott partnering now dropping a low Jordan golf. I mean, so it's not just like, I think like the fashion side of things and, and the, um, like when you go back to 2020, just more people invested in golf. I feel like that has been a really cool thing to see. I will say though, like regardless of which side you stand on between live and PGA, I do, I, it really kind of bothers me to like where we're at, like professionally. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I know a lot of people don't like change and, and, and I just not to I get, like, really like it. See for me, like I do and I don't like, I think at one point, at some point there's going to be, another maybe just one league where they're all together but i don't think that's going to be for a while down the road so it's just hard to like i think it definitely needed a shake up and it needed a change right and i think just for me personally I just it's hard to like see two leagues when there's still like there isn't the best people in one league right now you know what i mean if that makes sense mm -hmm. no 100 percent. and i think like I mentioned this in a video a little while back, but I think golf is going through its first lifestyle era. It's like very reminiscent of like the late nineties, early two thousands in hoops. Again, I'm a, a big fan of basketball. So yeah. what you yeah. saw that happened in the basketball stage yeah. is starting to like unpack in golf, which makes things really interesting. But I think again, like in this lifestyle area, like it's a pendulum and it's like swinging very far left or right, however you want to look at it in a direction where it's going to go too far at one way. And then everybody's going to wait for it to come back where it's actually in a state that everybody really enjoys. So yeah, there's a ton of chaos that's going right now um, at the highest level, which is somewhat unfortunate. Like I'm really curious of what's going to happen, but I think just like you said, it's a little annoying when you're trying to figure out like where you're going to watch what at the time, um, which makes it difficult just from a, a consumption standpoint. But yeah, sure. out of that, I think, that's where you see like leaps and bounds from an innovation standpoint and who's actually going to like do it the right way. So you, you talked about, you've had some brand and marketing experience and all that. Did you have any like previous experience creating like a social media channel? I know you talked about the Oregon uh, deal, but like anything previously, like, cause I mean, it seemed like you, you seem very professional at what you do. So they said it's, it's, it's very quality, but it, it just seems like you're not just some like random person that just like, like I'm just going to start <laughs> this and do it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
No, I mean, I think a part of like my everyday role, they, you can only get better at your job if you're like experimenting. So for me, like this whole project was an experiment, something that I've always had like a creative itch um, to be able to go execute stuff the way that I wanted to. So I have 10 years of growing brands through digital and then IRL, like in real life experiences and stuff. So just taking a lot of like those understandings and again, like trying to fill the gap where I couldn't find what I was looking for. And I felt like I had good enough taste that people would at at the very least just be interested in. And um, I think the most important thing about this channel specifically is just to make sure that I'm not selling anybody anything. It's just like you said, it's a place to talk about stuff. It's a place for you guys to discover and everybody else to come and find these gems, um, make with it what you want. But at the end of the day, like this is my this is my taste. This is stuff that I'm interested in. With that being said, do you do you reach out to companies or like how do you come across like like w- w- what do you look for in a company to, to to post on your on your page? No, so I think that's that's what's been wild about the whole process. I've never actually like reached out to anybody directly. Um, I would say there is an overwhelming amount of positivity on the channel, which is super shocking to me. I don't necessarily see that being matched on like TikTok, which is also like kind of interesting. TikTok is just a whole nother animal, like what's going on in shopping and stuff like that. I've really thought about in the last couple of weeks of just stop posting to that platform just because it's, I don't know, it's getting kind of annoying. Um, but on Instagram specifically, like these brands, I think this space, this like tastemaker area, people are very adamant about um, like the personalizing their their experience and making sure that they, they there's a face behind the brand, which is really cool. So um, again, I think that's where a lot of like my interest comes from. I'm very passionate about what the content looks like, what the story is behind the brand, and then um, how the product is executed too. So like those three pillars are what captures my initial interest and if it checks all those boxes then i'll try and like put together something that's interesting for why i um either like that brand or i'm interested in what they're doing so i definitely want to talk you know ask some of the questions like maybe some of the favorite brands that you've you've covered before and i know you posted a video about some of your top brands in 2023 so i'd like to cover those as well um and so that being said, I just lost my train of thought of what I was going to ask, but um, <laughs> I had three questions in one. Um, oh man! Can, yeah, can we? Oh, I know what I was going to say. There was a there was a brand that you that you actually talked about the other day, um, and the reason kind of caught uh, caught my eye was it's a local company here in Minnesota, and I've never even mm. personally. Heard of it. What is that? Uh, Sentinel Sentinel Golf Sentinel. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so, I got absolutely blasted for calling it. How did I say it? Minneapolis. Yeah, so I, I was like, "Yo, what is going on?" <laughs> yeah, people are coming out of the woods. So funny like, enough, I, I uh I found an apparel company where it's it like uh, phonetically sounds out Minneapolis. <laughs> right after I watched that, I was like, "No, <laughs> uh, no, I wasn't going to call you out on that." But I, I, the only reason why I brought it up is again, I, I live in downtown Minneapolis, and I've never heard of them personally. And I was scrolling through their their uh their page, and then clicked on their website, and yeah, again, it's crazy that. You know, right here in my backyard, there's these brands that I've never even knew existed. And I I almost wish it was from like YZ just to hear him try to say YZ because it's not spelled right. <laughs> yeah. Or um or what's another weird one that oh, we, we have? Some weird we got a bunch. Uh, uh Rozo. Oh, Rozo's a mess. That's a weird one. Yeah, there's a bunch of yeah. weird cities that we have here in Minnesota. Yeah, but... I I promise if you saw how YZ was spelled, you would have butchered it. Oh, I'm horrible at grammar too. I just told everybody that I was taking shots at everybody that pronounced Oregon, Oregon. So oh, yeah, I was, I was a little tipsy on that one. No, but, but just going back to like, I, I, that's what I think as a, as a viewer of, you know, follow as a follower on your page, like that's, that's what's I think most important part. Like you're not, you're not trying to sell me their product. It's more or less just more of like an informational piece, but then very nice clips. Like this is, it's a good presentation out. So you're like, you're almost really without selling the product you're really doing a good job of presenting it so it's like the first thing i'm gonna do is click on it and i said it's it caught my eye about the the minneapolis deal so um is there i mean i'm trying to figure out how i want to word this because again like you said you're not really trying to you're not trying to like go on one side or the other. you're not trying to sell anything because you're not necessarily like making any money on that but are there besides the three pillars that you'd mentioned, are there certain other like guidelines, like just not only like with the clothing brands, but like the, 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 uh, like, uh, uh almost that's the I, one that, yeah, I was going to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, we've worked with them before and they've been on the pod. And yeah. 
when I saw that oh, they sick. popped up, I was like, hell yeah. Because yeah. they're definitely a brand that I think deserves more recognition because their stuff, one, it's unbelievably nice. It is mm-hmm. super nice. Two, I'm a big fan of Porsches and the fact that it's modeled and the whole story yeah. is about a Porsche. I was like, mm-hmm. sign me up. Um, and three, I just feel like they should be bigger than they are because like it's a good quality. It's something that everybody can use. And it, like, it just looks phenomenal for you know being a tool obviously you have like the little zipper thing they came out with i don't know anything about mm-hmm. that no yeah um but like the tool i have one clipped on one of my bags i don't know which bag it's on but it's on one of them damn bags yeah stuff like that i mean like going back to to sentinel um the whole ethos behind the the foreign and forgotten like absolutely love that so i think to your point like you guys are probably well aware that there's a ton of brands in this space like it's getting very noisy, which isn't a bad thing. I think like consumers will find the the gems out there and talk about like the almost of the world. So um, what Sentinel has done a really good job of is taking those items that people often forget about, kind of like what almost is doing and then reimagine them, retool them to be like these absolute masterpieces. And I think again, going back to golf, going through its like lifestyle era, people really care about that stuff now. Um, so they're not just shopping on Amazon, trying to find the cheapest model of whatever it is out there that everybody's selling. And then with almost, which is interesting. So I did an unboxing of students new um, golf glove. And in the video, I said, should we be thinking about a better experience for basically what almost did? And they hit me up like right after the video and showed me a bunch of prototypes and I got super hyped. So I was just like cheering them on from the, the sidelines, if you will. And then probably like four or five months later, they're like, Hey, we got finished product. We'd love to send it to you. And I got it in hand. Same thing. Awesome experience. The unboxing experience was super legit. The product is really good. Um, and the story of the line of the brand is is solid too. So like something like that, that's functionally really great, has a really great story, has a really great experience. Like I'll pour in a lot of intentionality behind those videos because I think it deserves, like you said, more awareness, more exposure. I love the little things. Not obviously we're gonna keep talking about it almost for a little bit. Um, I hope it's not the entire thing, but I love that everything they do has a purpose, right? So like their unboxing, it's entirely recyclable, renewable. Um, I don't remember if I ever touched on that in my reel, but it's all renewable. I think you did. Uh it's definitely one of my favorites. Um, I have the red clay color. I don't know what color, I don't remember what color you got, but I got the white. I think you got the white. I think you got the white, but Everything they do it has a purpose, and I really do enjoy that about them. Um, and I like that they don't try to shove it down people's throats because, like, personally, I would never use one of the big glove things. I just I don't have enough gloves for it. See, I think that for me, that's something that I would definitely use. I use one I glove a at a time. I do too, but I have like the problem is, is depending on you know, like for me, like if I get sweaty, especially in the summer, you just have a glove, you crinkle it up, and it just sits in your bag. And it's like I actually went through my mm-hmm. one bag the other day. I like. 15 gloves and normally i do just God, wear one nasty. but they're not like all like gross but like when you're able to put them in those little sleeves like that and actually, i was a stuffer man i was stuffing yeah. my my gloves in like yeah, the driest spots in my bag <laughs> yeah next thing you know yeah you got like eight of them and they're all just balled up they're not like nasty it's just like they could be a lot more fresh if you keep them in those pouches that that's definitely something that i find very uh it would be convenient for me my issue is i forget mm-hmm. things so i would forget all my gloves in that little pouch and then i'd be like raw dog in it can throughout I, the day can you, can you borrow me a glove <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> to go to the pro shop yeah. <laughs> yeah. um pretty soon i mean is this so like fast forward a little bit the way that you're you're making these videos and again i know you're again we're going back to like you're trying to find what fits your uh your criteria but do you think at some point, I mean, you're going to be, you're going to have a, a room full of all of this, this uh, apparel slash merchandise and accessories. Cause I mean, again, obviously with almost, like you said, like they liked what you did. They're like, Hey, I want to send you the, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, I feel like that is something that you'll probably see here in the near future. No, that's a hundred percent. Right. I think like I've gotten to the point now where I'm trying to get, I don't want to say more selective, but more like, curated in my approach um which is really really hard it's hard to like say no to a lot of things so i think for me um i'm a really big fan of marquez brownlee i don't know if like Mm -hmm. mkbhd like tech so that's like my that's my like approach to this space i don't know if you have like seen any parallels and how he like unpacks things but that's where like a lot of 
yeah, that's like a, a, where a lot of like the energy comes from. So for me, I think what's awesome about the page is constantly finding gems, but I also am, I don't want to say, I want to say like somewhat passionate about the sustainability like of the sport too. So exactly what you're saying. I don't want a room just full of yeah. stuff that I never use. Um, so I am trying to be uh, a little bit more selective in what comes in and what I'm talking about too. And I think that's where the pod comes into where I can naturally just go on and ramble about specific things as opposed to like trying to get down a 90 second video that actually has impact. Yeah, now that you mentioned the podcast, we kind of transition. Next. There's definitely more questions that we obviously want to ask you, but you are launching a, a podcast coming out. Do you know when that's going to drop? Uh, trying for early January. I was going to try and get out a couple of episodes for holiday, but I was like, ah, I want to actually do this the right way. So we'll just pause. It's for now. tough, dude. If you ever need advice, let me know. Um, I know I've had a handful of people that you know, like the Gulf Airs or certain one. Yeah. They've been like picking my brand. I'm like, don't do this because I wish I would have done that. Um. <laughs> But yeah, if you need any advice, let me know. I'm the one who like sets all this up. This is on my rig. Um, it's a mess of chords, but damn, it works. Yeah. Are you are you gonna try to are you gonna do more like unboxings like on this podcast, that kind of deal, or are you gonna like actually try to, you know, for example, <laughs> back to uh uh some of the other brands, you're gonna try to have the actual company on, like somebody that's you know uh, you know, with the Sentinel, you're gonna have somebody from Sentinel come on and hop on the podcast. I think it'll be a little bit of both. I think it'll be a little bit of, hey, what's going on week to week that's really interesting just because, again, there's so many narratives, so many storylines that are happening. Um, I don't necessarily want to talk about like live and PGA Tour and scores and pros and stuff like that. Like there's just enough podcasts out there that are like hammering that. I'm more interested in, again, allowing myself like more time to get in the weeds about a specific launch that I really like. Um, and then the experience that I've like had with that brand, I think secondarily also, I've got a lot of interest from brands. I'm wanting to come in and storytell around like who they are and like their brand and what they're trying to get into. So again, that's where it goes to like, I want to make sure that I'm doing this the right way and make sure that it's like very thoughtful and intentional and it's just not a waste of people's time. So, um, yeah, just working through like all the little kinks, both on like the tech side. And then again, the yeah. actual, like, how is this going to flow? <laughs> It's funny because that's kind of been like our evolution. You know, we started off, hey, let's talk about, you know, this major, made our picks, blah, blah, blah. And now we've kind of, I don't want to say transitioned, but we've it's definitely different. like kind of switched tune to where it's more like, hey, come on, tell your story. Let's have a conversation yeah. about it. Um, My big thing, and you don't have to take this advice, but we want it to be super organic, right? So mm -hmm. um, I don't remember who asked me. Oh, it was Brian. Uh, yeah. I did. So when Derek's not here, I try to bring in like a guest host. And Brian O'Reilly from Duff and Up Pod did one with me. And he's like, do I have to come up with notes or anything? I'm like, dude, I don't even have notes. <laughs> yeah, I normally do notes. But yeah, that, yeah, I mean, again, but we're both really organic on how we. Yeah. So it just, you know, keep it organic. Keep it flowing. Um, everything people hear or see or whether you watch it or listen to us is genuinely how I am. It's how Derek is. Yeah. We just hmm. want to make people go, wow, these are cool dudes. And if you don't like us, that's fine. But I don't want to pretend we're something we're not. Yeah. And, and we did like, so when we first started mm -hmm. it, it, it going back to like what he previously said, we was like, let's do like highlights <laughs> once a week, do two picks. And like you said, it is very saturated and it's like, we're just two dudes, two, two average golfers, which, which we have in our intro, you know, and it's like, there are a lot of other podcasts out there. So that was kind of where for a while we, it was pretty much just me and Dom. And then we're like, you know, we have a good platform on Instagram and let's try to expand that and just use it as uh, a talking point where we can try to get some of these golf brands that we've worked with in the past. So kind of the mm -hmm. same concept. I mean, not really, but again, trying to just reach out to companies that we're really interested in that, you know, really want to make the, you know, make golf better and, or try to, you know, reinvent something, whatever it might be, but it's really interesting and fascinating, like hearing different stories and kind of how they got introduced to the game of golf, just like how you had mentioned, like most people that we asked when they picked up golf, they were either really terrible at it, but like your answer is <laughs> kind of one of a kind for that we've heard so far. And we've had a lot of guests on. So I think it's just really interesting being able to talk to, to different companies and just different entrepreneurs and, the backgrounds of like where people came from and, and how they kind of grew into the game of golf. Cause it, it, you know, when you like with the social media and all that, there is a, 
a lot of brands and companies, but at the end of the day, it's a, it's a still small knit community, in my opinion, from like where we're at. And I, that's what I really love about it. If you ask, um, uh, was it Mark Kraken golf? He does oh, a lot of divot tools. You probably Mark follow, is, follow Kraken golf. God, he's so talented. He, I've given him so much money. but my but my point is is that like there's a lot of divot tool and companies out there that are really good quality like mark but i mean there are times that we've had different companies that there is nobody and there there's nobody like mark no but i'm just saying like i know what you're saying they're they're all like willing to help one another out and that's Mm -hmm. what i really kind of think is really unique and cool because at the end of the day they're competitive competitors really in this market but and the cool thing for you is when you start your podcast you're going to realize that everybody who has a podcast is going to offer advice um and i don't mean to like keep throwing that at you one that really helped me out because obviously i'm the one who has to like learn how to do all this i'm not saying derek didn't mm-hmm. no, I but didn't kind of depends on the day some days you're not even here i yeah um, <laughs> type up questions when i'm here and that's... on the screws guys <laughs> i think it was mac Help me out so much using like, hey, this is how I make my page look, stuff like that. So mm-hmm. that is like the coolest part about the golf and like the golf podcast community is we're all essentially like one other than like a handful who think they're better than everybody else. Yeah. Mm. No, that yeah. makes sense. I think like the the foundation or the base that I've somewhat landed on now is I think I, I might have put this on my stories, but it's swing thoughts, which is like two to three hey what's going on that's of topic that's super relevant and then the other thing that was like new kid on the block another brand that i've like found recently that i think is worthy of talking about and then in those like swing thoughts segments bringing on somebody that's relevant to one of those topics so i think that's like the unique spot where it doesn't have to be like a 30 minute 45 minute spot maybe it's just like 15 minutes and they get right to the point because i think that again what I've learned from Instagram specifically, and you guys called it out, is just like be super direct, like cut mm-hmm. out all the noise that's going on and just like get exactly to the point. Sure. Um, so yeah, just trying to keep things as tight as I can. Again, I think the, the other thing that comes out of that is it's repeatable. That's where it's something where I can keep doing without it um, taking too much energy and effort. Yeah. I kind of like that we're a wild card because some weeks you're just like, wow, this is easy. And then other weeks you're just like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> Well, magic comes out of that sometimes. I think that yeah. that's like some of my page too. Like there's just some things that I like tried off the whim and they popped like the, the, yep. the golf drops was something I was like, Oh, let's just talk about like everything that dropped this week. It was a heavy week. And then 200, 300,000 views later, I was like, Whoa, people like I this. Yep. I was like, I just was taking screenshots and like people really like this. So yeah, it turned into a hailstorm. <laughs> we worked with um, bag boy. When we went to mm-hmm. our uh, shindig, I was like, hey, you know, I'll make reels for you guys, blah, blah, blah. The reels I made about those damn travel bags have been some of my biggest damn reels this year. And it makes me so <laughs> mad because I think one of the biggest ones is literally just me picking my bag off at up at MSP when we landed and dropping it. I'm like, what in the world? And then there's some where it's like I work super hard on, like whether it was like one from Curex or whatever. I'm like, great. I got, I got like a. There yeah. are some yeah wild cards that you're just like you yeah. put all this time and effort into it and it's just kind of a flop. But yeah, like, how do you not like this? this is good stuff. And there's some yeah. that it's like it's literally simple. just me picking up the bag from like baggage claim and then dropping it, and it, it just like I was like, stop it. <laughs> so my my boot boost content for the page is a seven second video where I'll go to threads and like I don't know if you say thread it out, like text it out or whatever. Just a specific question. That's like, uh, there's no like hurdles to answering. It's not like, like, what's your handicap? People are a little nervous on like talking about that or, um, like what's your carry or whatnot with your driver? Like none of those types of questions. So like the most recent one I did was, um, what bag are you rolling with? And like those blow up and I get yeah, a ton really of like sim- followers and reach with it. Yeah. But I use those as like, again, like boost pieces. Yeah. I haven't put a dollar into my page, but those, because they're, up to like Instagram's best practices. They stretch really far. People see that they come back probably to what your guys's point. They see a bunch of other videos and then next thing you're in, they're like hooked. Yep. So yeah, those are like little pieces and nuggets that like I've just tried, they pop, they work. And it's just like, okay, how do we, how do we reinvent this again? Yeah. The one thing I'll just talk one more thing about the podcast. And we'll talk about some more of the, uh, the other uh, things you've covered, but my piece of advice is, and I'm not, I'm guilty of this because again, but there is uh, 
staying uh, consistent. Yeah, Mr. Consistent. Down, down, consistent. We, we, we've been a lot more consistent. I have missed year. one episode, and that's because I thought I was dying. <laughs> so, yeah, I will say, yes, I have definitely been I was not. way more inconsistent. But as, just like social media, though, you have to be consistent on what you're posting, right? You just post daily, whether it's a few times a day, once a day, whatever it might be. But um, being consistent is 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 key but it's also really hard i mean podcasts it, it takes a lot into it i mean dom does pretty much most of the stuff but for the, it's still like you have to put a lot of work into do, coming up with certain questions i mean we could just sit here and just ramble on but for the most part i try to come up with key talking points to at least try to help learn more about what you're doing right so mm-hmm. but no i i was super excited for you um and and let us know what we can do to help promote it for you um or if you need a guess i'll go on and ramble <laughs> yeah no you if i'm on your guys's stuff you guys have to be on mine that's like, that's how i have a lot right. of <laughs> i have a lot of golf stuff so no we'd love we'd love to hop on we were sent bags from like japan and they're wild yeah we did oh yeah, yeah they're, out, they're um, nuts it's pretty cool i don't know if you've seen them. you might have seen them before but omni omni x yeah omni x they're very cool looking check them hmm. out so uh united um, arrows popped up a couple of weeks ago their stuff is crazy which uh, one is that? Japan too. United, United Arrows. I don't know if they're from Japan, but they're definitely overseas. Yeah. It's either China or Japan, but their bags are just nuts looking. And I kind of futuristic look. I love mine. Yeah. That's, that's they do uh it's uh, still the bag my clubs are currently in. Same for me too. Yeah. Custom work. I'm I will say too lazy to switch at this point. Yeah, you've done a collab. I don't want to say you've done a collab because you haven't, but you've covered Sunday, Sunday <laughs> golf. We I love Sunday golf. They're awesome. We work with them quite a bit. Yeah, they're very, very mm-hmm. great. Very uh Pretty much every product that we've had has been awesome. Um, but I do want to, do you have like a preference in like what you're covering? Like, I mean, like if it's bags, accessories, apparel, shoes, I mean, obviously some brands cover it all, but is there something that really kind of sticks out to you? It, it's definitely like footwear. Uh, you could call it gear, like accessories, bags, all uh, kind of wrap all that into one. And then apparel. Those are like the three, three really big categories. I try to, stay away from clubs just because it's not really my lane um people get kind of weird about that stuff it's a very expensive category to talk in so you can bend people the wrong way yeah and i just like super fascinated in it like we'll listen to the most boring longest youtube videos on club builds but i will not speak about it (laughs) yeah so i'll I'll stay in the footwear space that makes sense um, do you know, like off top, like how many brands you've probably covered, like ballpark? Oh man, that's a great question. Two. Uh, wow. I mean, it's got to be close to fifty. I would say okay. around that number. I, I think is is got to be somewhat close. You talked about the um the drops. What what are like the course cards? So course cards are products in specific categories that I uh, am interested in. Some of them I have owned um, or like have in inventory call or whatever, have like worn a decent amount. And then some of them they're like sitting in my cart, like kind of excited about, but just haven't pulled the trigger. Again, going back to like, I probably have way more than I need. Do I necessarily need it? But yeah, I think like something that traditional media that I haven't necessarily liked is the pay to play environment. And a lot of like these tastemaker brands just do not have the dollars to be able to go pay a golf digest to get their pant um, involved in like the top 10 golf pants. So you go to those articles and you're like, I wouldn't wear nine of the 10 pants that are like featured in this. And then you go behind it and you realize that there's commission and paywall, which is look, that's how media has been for the last a thousand years. But this course cards is, a new way to look at it in the sense of like, here's again, from a curator's standpoint, these are the things that I really like um, that I think brands are executing really well. Do you think that will change? Like now that people are starting to understand that like down the road, because again, yeah, you realize like how, like the dollar amounts getting thrown and, and, you know, like said the commissions, but now like there's so many content creators, people are actually like, like you said, like I wouldn't wear nine out of 10 those brands, but now that there's so many other new brands coming out that have really quality products, do you think that'll change you in the near future? Like for some of these Funny brands? enough, I only wear Adidas pants. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be on like meta and like these, these social platforms trying to figure out the moniz- monetization aspect of it. Um, Cause you could easily like build in, um, 
affiliate like links and stuff like that. But again, I hate I like when what stuff gets messy. Yeah, so it's like, like what's like the cleanest way to do this? Um, and again, I, I've really thought about starting up a, a subscription on my channel, but I don't want to then become a paywall. Like I think what a lot of people really like about the channel is it's super accessible and it's very easy to digest. So again, I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to, to have like a practical monetization aspect of it without it like landing on the brand. And then also um, I don't want to take anything away from the, the consumer either. Sure. Well, that makes sense. I, I really like that because it, it is some of the, you know, you can make money and you could probably make really good money. But again, is that, that's, is that what you really want? That's not what your brand is based off of. Right. You know what I mean? Like you don't mm -hmm. want to sell out and be like, but there, that's the whole thing with TikTok too. I've just, I, you know, as having safe part golf and having a decent following, it's like, ah, I probably should create a TikTok before somebody else just takes it, you know? So like I had it and it was like decent for a while, but one, it's overwhelming posting co constantly the content on both platforms or I other post, platforms. Yeah. I post a clip a week and yeah. I'm like, this is stupid, but I, yeah, I just not, I'm not a big TikTok fan to be honest with you. I just don't really like TikTok. I think honestly, so, Instagram is the most powerful social media platform for what you're trying to do and like for what, I like doing and that's just my personal opinion but I've always just kind of gravitated towards Instagram for mm. doing doing what I'm doing. Yeah, I thought so I I same thing. I had the handle for a long time, never posted a video on it, just wanted to be able to have a presence there, the flexibility if I wanted to start posting. I started it with the hopes that maybe there's enough people on here that might not have Instagram that will make their way to Instagram. Um yeah. and then again, just I just don't like like the usability of it. The the UI UX of TikTok kind of sucks. And then this whole wave of TikTok shopping. Every time I log into the app and um, flip through some videos and stuff, because a lot of my stuff is golf centric now, I'm still getting hit with like foot massagers and shampoo and these earbuds that are six dollars. You can't believe like how cheap. It just drives me crazy. And they don't really so, work that well. I've I've bought a lot of that stuff. I bought stuff. It's <laughs> all. I actually bought I something think, from TikTok. I, did, I, haven't, I did. So I, I had a, I had a conspiracy around it that ninety percent of the products that you see on TikTok shopping are uh, the like knockoff products that are all over the world that people are just trying to get rid of because everybody over invested after right. COVID. So people are just sitting on insane amount of like electronics, and now like all of a sudden TikTok shop just started blowing up <laughs> with all these like random electronics. So. I don't yeah. know. It drives me crazy. I can't stand I it. I feel attacked. I bought a... I feel attacked. He bought a massage. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I, uh, uh, funny enough... You bought that I, sweatshirt off TikTok shop, didn't you? Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> um, bought a, uh, an emulator to play like old Pokemon games on because like... Oh, did you really? I get stressed out. Yeah, it makes me feel nostalgic about my childhood. So I've been playing Pokemon Emerald. Does it work? Yeah. It has like 18,000 <laughs> like 18, games. Well, that that's... For that's me to play like four. That's true. I have seen those videos. And th those are probably one of the only... They're really things nice. that are interesting. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. Don't, Just I have bricks no that look like they're from the 90s. But like you said, there's 36,000 It looks like a Game on. Boy, dude. I, yeah. It makes me so happy. Raymond, if there's like one thing that you could change about the game of golf right now, what would it be? Ooh, good question. Uh, probably the cost. Um, I think that's like a very sensitive conversation just from like an accessibility standpoint, uh, both like to play and then um, just as somebody who's like very interested in the fashion and footwear side of things, like stuff is super expensive. Everything is expensive right now, um, which I get from like a, one of these like middle of the grounds companies, like they're, they're dealing with very thin margins um, and low like inventory levels, which just makes things more expensive. So the scaling of the sport uh, is going to get really interesting, but yeah, the, the cost just overall is, is getting like shocking. Yeah. I was going to say, that's probably that and pace of player, like the two things that most people would complain about that they wish they could change. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have, uh, Dom, if you want to ask any other questions you can think of, because typically, so we, we just want to keep you for just a few more minutes. We'll do rapid fire questions. So we just have a handful of questions. Um, but if you have something you want to ask. I do. Before, I have a, I, I was brainstorming on my, my race car on my way here. Uh, yeah. Hit me up. I haven't driven my car in like a month and a half. So it felt like a rocket. <laughs> I was like, hell yeah. And then I realized it's a Hyundai. It's a nice thing about having a company. <laughs> like, 
don't have to yeah, you don't have to drive your car if you don't want yeah to. but now when i hit a bump i'm like wow <laughs> um so I, I'm, I don't want to read this um so obviously you know you've talked about a lot of brands you've got a lot of posts what is one brand you think everybody should know about within the golf space Ooh, good question. Wow, I know. Great I'm question. Proud of that one. Yeah. Um, so that post that I posted a day was really difficult to put out because, well, it's a little bit frustrating that I can only have like nine cards in the carousel. Obviously, there's like other hacks that I could do, but I really wanted to do the Tastemakers 10. Um, but out of that, I asked myself that very same question of like, if I could only choose one of these, what would that be? Um, I think it's got to be Sentinel. I think if, if Sentinel's like started to do a little bit more apparel, but because they hit all of the spots outside of footwear, um, I'm a big standard on like quality and their, their stuff is so insane. It's so well done and executed. And a lot of like the colorways and the, the final execution of stuff is exactly what I like. I, I wanted um, to pull the trigger on the black t-shirt. I saw they had a couple of different, again, very kind of simplistic style, but the quality looks really, really good. And I think it was 42 bucks. And I'm like, okay, it's for a t-shirt. Yeah, that can be kind of high, but there are some like $40 t-shirts that are not good quality. I wonder if we could just go pick mm-hmm. it up, save on shipping. Oh, maybe. I, said, I don't both. know if they have like a, yeah, that's a good question. But I'm not opposed to spending $42 if the quality is there and it, you know, it fits. I think I spent $40 on this. <laughs> well and th- that's a video that i've been like somewhat like a comedian like trying to figure out what the bit is but trying to articulate the importance of not necessarily like buying better buying less but like i don't know i've, I've gotten to a point in my life like financially where i can start to afford better pieces but because everything is also super expensive like it's getting kind of hard to figure out what is actually good based off of like price price i've That's definitely like point. picked up some things where i've gotten i'm like whoa you're charging how much for this like it's falling apart before i even put it on so i don't know that that's happening which makes things super scary so the foot it's super n- normal in footwear like people are dealing with, with fakes and stuff like that but yep. yeah the, you, the apparel stuff is is interesting do you get a so i don't know if this would kind of contradict what you're trying to do but going back to like what you said golf's already expensive right? it's one thing you change but do you um do you get like messages of like hey like this is my budget for something do, do you ever get people are like what what would you suggest if i have 40 dollars to spend on a polo or something like that versus like because some of these clothing you know polos are 78 dollars, but they are good quality but maybe for somebody who is looking for good quality but on a budget you know what i mean is that that kind of contradict what you're trying to do but do you get messages like that no so and i think that's what's really unique about the space there's always an alternative for something so somebody that's like like me when i was in college i was broke so like i could not afford a lot of the brands well part of it was a lot of these brands didn't exist but like the pieces that i was looking for just didn't exist weren't in my um like financial capacity but yeah i'm starting to get a lot more people that are like hey i'm really interested in mckenzie bags but I can't like shell out seven or eight hundred dollars for it. Is there an alternative option that's really good? So a part of like this scouting process, if you will, of like trying to find these gems, of trying to find the best quality for cost too. Um, navigating that is has been a lot of fun. So yeah, but that stuff is definitely ramping up for sure. Yeah, especially around the holidays, it's been wild, and that's why like I I put out. I think one holiday video, but people were blowing me up about, I was like, I can't even deal with this. Like, I don't want to be your, your personal shopper. I'm just going to make this yeah. one video and then just like disappear. Take it a, take it at Yeah. Your own. Yeah, exactly. Well, that was, <laughs> that was kind of getting at my next point. It's like, you're almost kind of going to that. Like if you start going down that road now, it's like, now you are being a personal shopper for certain people, which people do like that, but is that what you mm-hmm. want? You know what I mean? It really kind of comes out like, is that what you want? You know, but Regardless, I I think to Dom introduced me to your page and I I say I follow you now and I think you have something very interesting and I think it's a very unique uh, page and I, I think it's going to do really well. It's already doing really well, so keep up the great work. Um, no, I, really appreciate I do. It. We do want to ask some rapid fire questions real quick. Uh, it just takes a few minutes, but the um, I actually have it set up here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna let you ask this one question real quick. I was gonna say I don't think. I, yeah, no, I clicked on a different one. So this is our second pod today. 
Yeah, my words are slurred a little bit, so I'm uh, fired. Been a long no, day. you guys are straight. We recorded earlier pod. as well. We so. now have two episode hundred and eights. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're dropping one. <laughs> we actually, we actually recorded with um, um True Links, True Links Golfware. Oh, sick! Yeah, yeah they. Yeah, it was, uh, they're like October back in Halloween because I was always really interested in their footwear because I got a lot of DMs about. That's the other thing that I really like about the channel that I think people are like really open about is what other people like. Like, I'm just interested in what other people are like rocking wearing interested in um and i got blown up about true links footwear and i was like shoot i gotta figure out how i can get connected with the brand so yeah they're really good people though yeah great story yeah exactly he was awesome so yeah we we're it's been a long night so i said i apologize i've my... never said skeletons so many times on a damn yeah, podcast yeah, that one, uh, <laughs> that i love was... that damn I don't know if this really kind of pertains to him, but you could certainly maybe one that he wants to cover. That yeah. So, yeah. What would your dream collab be? You know, maybe you want to cover them. Maybe you'd like to work with them kind of in depth. Um, do you have any ideas? Man, I am heavy on the bag space right now. Um, I've used Sunday and I've known that team for a really long time. Uh, well before I started the page. So like we've had some interesting conversations on what a collab would look like. And I think that's like, a potential next chapter for like 2024 2025 of like getting pretty tight with some of these brands i have like a lot of really great ideas but i'd also just don't have the time to like execute products so it doesn't make sense for me to link up with some of these brands put out a really like i don't want to say exclusive but like limited project that doesn't like hurt them financially that allows like somewhat of a sparking conversation sure. um that's timely i think is something that could be really interesting so uh yeah sunday is uh we're having a lot of talks i would say <laughs> good. No, good for you there so they're awesome i we, i really like them a lot yeah not at all about sunday but about my first vessel bag this year mm. holy shit <laughs> yeah those things like you know people you're saying you those like those mckenzie bags you don't want to drop seven eight hundred dollars mm-hmm. buy a vessel bag and you'll be blown away yeah for a lot cheaper. no a hundred percent and that's like I have like six designs. I'm going to get a McKenzie bag one day that I like design on my own. Um, and then I also have been like somewhat putting money aside just to get a vessel bag. Cause I have one of my really close friends got a vessel and I was like, dude, this thing is wild, man. I wanted so to, nice. uh, I had a really big, you sun- awesome too, right? Oh yeah. It has yeah, my it's name. It's, it's got the podcast. Yeah. It has, it has a logo that we've never used. Mm-hmm. Probably never will use, but I like it cause I like flowers. So whatever. Um, I got that in pink. It says Dominic. Um, hindsight, I should have said Dom Dom. Yeah, we probably Dom Dom. We should have mm. got Dom Dom. Would have been better, but I I had this big Sun Mountain bag, and I'm like, there's it's so much bag that I downsized into this vessel bag, and I love it. Mm. And the issue is, then we got sent the Omni X bags. And I'm just like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I they're awesome. I actually also have a. I love my vessel bag though. Awesome Sunday golf bag, and I same thing though. It's like. My previous bag was kind of bulky as well, and it's and it was old. There's actually a loudmouth golf. I don't know if you've seen those loudmouth. Have you? Oh seen yeah, that? I've seen theirs. Have you seen yep. that meme where the guy's got the matching pants and the matching luggage yep. bag? <laughs> all the different colors. That was my bag. I'm That's like, okay. him. Yeah. Like I gotta get, I gotta upgrade, and it was a little bit bulky, and so I, I went with the Sunday custom bag, and I, I that's what I've been gaming most of the time. We just got an Omni that Omni X bag, and um, really nice bag too. So check it out. But um, they come with like two different like club covers. Yeah, it's kind of bizarre. Yeah, yeah. check them out. It's really and like a dust bag. I've never. I felt like I was unboxing a big sneaker. That's that's the other whole part about doing these videos. It comes with the dust. Yeah, the presentation is really cool. So, mm-hmm. um, oh, that's I so know bad. you tried to make a video and I like ripped open my box like immediately. <laughs> I'm like, no way. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So you're on the first tee. What's your walk up song? Oh wow. Uh. Dang, that is a crazy question. Probably mystical uh kings of comedy was the opening for who was that who opened for it cedric the entertainer um shoot what is the name of the song not dangerous Uh, is it yes it is yes (laughs) yes that is my walkout song that was in kings of comedy um i mean i grew up in 89 or i was born in 89 so like same as me god you guys are so old there we go man so yeah, you see, you that, know how my knees are. Me. You know how my knees are feeling. You're you're the sports guy. You know how knees are right you now. You guys are Angles, so knees. old. Yeah. Oh yeah. That. Um. Great. That's a good answer. I like that one. What um, would yours be? Because we didn't answer it last time. I don't like when you ask me this because I, I know same thing. Like when we put like a spot, it's more for the for the guests. But when anyone does this to me every time, and I still always give like a crappy <laughs> answer. I just say like ah, I have to think about it. Wow, what a crappy answer. Um. 
I do have a couple of Spotify playlists that have like gotten a shocking amount of listens. I started like I, I think one of them I called Bermuda or something like that, and it's just yeah. a playlist of. I can't remember if it's lo-fi or just whatever I was listening at the time. And like it blew up and I was like, oh, that's kind of weird that like people are just jumping into the Spotify playlist. <laughs> well, I was I'm so the music that the picture in the backdrop that you have with the football shield. I, I'm try, I can't remember who, what artist who that is because I have a couple of their songs. The one with the football shield. Oh, Gene, but, Gene Dawson. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say I have a couple of songs and I couldn't remember the names of the songs, but I'm like, dude, I know I've seen that album cover that before wild so So what's even crazier is so gene dawson uh used to be represented by the founder of jane golf i don't know if you guys know who jane golf is oh it's a smaller brand that's like very experience based has done like a lot of really good projects with like top golf and stuff um yeah they're super legit but he used to represent uh gene and then like him and i just got on a call of probably a couple months ago and he was like is that gene in the background that's wild it's just small world like you guys already talked about it but (laughs) Yeah, it's a lot smaller than people think. I think my walk up song, since Derek can't think of one, um, I would probably do like Invincible by Pop Smoke. Oh, that's a kind of, I, I think it's a banger. Um, and then lately, like if it's more mellow, I'm not trying to get like all hyped up. I might do like Eurostar by Central C or featuring Central C. Yeah. It's super mellow, instrumental. Um, it's not in English for a lot of it. What are you going with? It's fresh as time, baby. Hey, fresh time, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing some big timers. Throwing away. That's also back. a classic. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that definitely turns some heads. I would also do. Um, <laughs> this is the one I've been doing by David Banner all the time. David Banner. Uh, Not butterfly. You think others. of it. I'm just asked real quick. What's your favorite sport besides golf? Oh man, I mean, I played basketball or played football in college, but I love hoops. I love like hoop culture. I just everything around the sport is awesome. That that's kind of me too. I that was like my first sport that I fell in love oh. with. And uh, oh yeah, great songs. <laughs> but how about that Timberwolves squad, man? I've been waiting for the Timberwolves to do something for years, and we are we're onto something. I mean, I'm a Portland guy, and Dame left the city, so we're just. I love Dame. Scoot's I like gonna Dame. be a bust or not? Yeah, Scoot. Yeah, if he's gonna be a bust or not, so just patiently waiting. Back yeah. to like That's the jailblazer. I love Dame. Dude, Dame was just that guy. Yeah, they had a good thing going. Dame McCollum. I mean, that whole. Yeah, didn't they have Bledsoe? For a little bit, or am I thinking uh, of somebody else? We had a little bit of everybody for a little yeah, bit. Of, that's true. true. Yeah. But no, yeah, that's like that's a whole other conversation because I could sit here and talk hoops for hours. I can't honest. unless it's Kevin Garnett. I can't. Um, <laughs> what uh, do you prefer to walk or ride on the golf course? Uh, walking helped me get better quicker. Um, and like if you go back way in the archives of the page, I started doing this challenge called 96, 96 challenge. I'll probably bring it back. I actually just got a set of clubs from next round of clubs that I have been trying to find for like almost eight years now um i'm getting ready to make a video about it but like literally they got here today so like i haven't even opened the box it's just like just off camera um but yeah like walking the course like it's a completely different experience like you just understand the dynamics of like how to play um a lot different i think it's i don't know it's just a lot more fun in my opinion to walk Um, and i think that's also played a role in slow play like that's something another video that I was thinking about doing was talking about the course in Texas that like introduced a cart to the first time. Yep. Cause something that I'm also really interested in is how golf is played overseas in other countries. Like I was on with Fantle Sport, the founder with Dan, and like he was telling me about in New Zealand, a lot of people don't listen to music and like carts are off limits just because it burns the grass it seems to like slow down play, but the music thing also threw me off. I was like, well, what are you guys doing out there? Just yeah. like drinking and just like playing sticks or what? So no drinking either. It's just, just really interesting. Then you go to yeah. the next one. That is actually a really interesting take. And honestly, I haven't, I've never thought about that because you, when you think about a golf cart, it's going to drive way faster, but then now you're scooting around. Looking just for watching golf people balls. zigzagging. Watching, yeah. yeah. And really, if you're walking, I mean, I was going to say, like, how does it burn the grass? And then I remember you and I definitely almost flipped a golf cart as we were spinning down this damn hill. <laughs> so I can see that happening. But yes, we definitely burned the grass there. Probably. 
But that's a good take. I'll, you have to yeah, you have to post on that because I think that's a very interesting, and I think you could be onto something there. Um, I definitely lost my beer. Uh, I'm gonna. I think that's pretty much it. We do ask a food question, so Dom, you can ask however you want to ask this food. So we're cup. out your area because it sounds like we're gonna be out there eventually. Yep, probably within the next we're year. Come visit you for sure. Yeah, this is where I'm gonna feel really short and unathletic. Um, where should we go eat? Man, that's real. I haven't this... been to Portland in a minute, but it is very hard to like miss in Portland. So, uh, I mean, I have kids, so is. like when I'm driving to Portland, I stop at a place called Big Jim's. Crazy good hamburgers and milkshakes, like literally always spot in Hood River. Um, but yeah, like you won't miss in Portland. Um, it's definitely a foodie spot for sure. I love food. It's a it's a big coffee it's hub and, and, and it's, it's everything. A, Breweries, it IPA, desserts. Yeah, it's, it's a brewery type of deal. Yeah, okay, that's what I kind of figured. So right yeah. up my alley, the you coffee, get a little bit of everything. Things. Yeah. Well, Raymond, man, it's been a blast having you on. I appreciate you taking the time uh, and joining us on the podcast, and we're super excited for you on your podcast. And uh, you know, hopefully, we can have you on in 2024, and we can talk about upcoming projects you might have. Hundred percent. You guys will get an email or a text or something to book a date. Awesome. That Lights sounds out, good. Right? My light just die. It could have, yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. Time, time to go. All right, man. Nice to meet you, man. I said keep up all the great work. Let us know how we can help you out. All right. Really appreciate it, fellas. All right, take care. Tip.